All right, awesome. Thank you, Wayne. All right, so uh, I must warn you up front that there will be some statements and info shared that might shock you, or at least make you think. Please note that these comments are my, my opinion, and um, I'm going to try and, through this presentation, try and just uh, prove why am I making the statements. And the first statement I would like to make is that community schemes insurance will soon only be available for the selected few schemes or complexes. The second uh, statement I would like to make, our challenge as a broker or insurer are no longer premiums, but you keep body corporates and HOAs insured. Now I'm sure there's a couple of people that's got this face uh, looking at me. Uh, Wayne, I'm sure that there's no people left uh, as yet because I've, I've made that statement. But I'm sure that a couple of people of uh, that, uh, if I can just see your video, you probably look at this right now. The first thing that crosses your mind will be, why is this guy making this bold statements? Based on what information is he making the statements? The reason why I'm making a statement like this is because of challenges that the industry are facing or faced with at the moment. And it could be summed up in one sentence. The challenge of change. So what has changed? I'm going, through, I'm going to go through the four big ticket items uh, that I would like to share with you and will explain in brief today to motivate why I make that statement. We will unpack this in detail on sessions to come over the next few weeks. First, uh, I'm just going to let it all come onto the screen, but the first one will be weather patterns, a change in weather patterns, legislation, insurance requirements, and liability of key people. Let's start with the first factor, weather patterns. Have you realized how it changed in the last couple of years? The photo taken over, so over Johannesburg is of an electric storm. I read an article of a climatologist about three years ago who normally does work for the reinsurers in analyzing weather patterns all over the world. And you wrote this article on South African weather patterns. You know what the name of the article was? The perfect storm of ruin. He made a statement that South Africa will experience extreme storms and weather and weather patterns. Well, he wasn't wrong. 350 millimeters of rain in 15 minutes in the storm triangle, Germiston, Beckford View, and Melrose. The next, first, the next photos are shared with permission of the client on damages caused by the storm. This complex is situated in Germiston. You can just see there where the water levels and the water came through uh, right there in the middle of that cupboard. And there's the window that's out. Quite severe damages. Ever thought of uh, moving a double door fridge? There we go. That's what water can do. It moved this double door fridge, uh, as you can see, right out of its position. And the next photo was taken after the storm. So that was still water that was flowing out of the apartment. The next slide and the next video is also permission of the person that took the drone video footage. And this was a complex uh, that was damaged caused of a, a tornado heat, uh, the West Strand, a couple of years ago. As you can see, severe damages where all the roofs were blown off and a great amount of damages was caused. I'm sure there's some people on this webinar that uh, are familiar with this, uh, with this claim and was involved with this claim as well. Look, just look at what wind can do. If you can just look on the left hand side there, on the, uh, the shade nettings and also the poles. I mean, it's amazing what, on the top left hand corner at the top there, uh, coming up, that is a billboard. And that, if we, you'll see now if the, the camera turns, on the left hand bottom corner there, that, that used to be a billboard. Amazing what wind can do. All right, the next point, 
is legislation, the next factor. So what has changed? There were some changes as from October 2016 in legislation and amendments was made to some acts and new acts came into play. I would just like to go through a couple of changes that influence the insurance market in this acts and the changes in this acts. First one is the 10 year maintenance plan had to be done. Up to now, there are some schemes that have not done this yet for various reasons. This can play a huge role and we can see that assessors are requesting the plan on some claims already now, they're already requesting these uh, uh, maintenance plans uh, when they are handling a claim. Please note that this is supposed to be a working document and not in file 13 or a nice to have for CSOS. Valuation, that was another influence. Valuation, every three years, yeah, valuation. Every three years, evaluation needs to be done. And there is still schemes that have not done this yet. The act required that the scheme insure themselves against fidelity. Those that don't know what that is, it is insurance against fraud and theft and dishonesty of schemes money. This will include the managing agent, body corporate, and any third party responsible for the finances. It could be a bookkeeper or accountant as well. There's obviously a formula uh, that you need to work out the sum insured, and please contact us if you do not have that formula or need assistance. Public liability. The minimum requirement for, uh, for public liability is 10 million. And most of the policies on a body corporate uh, uh, scheme normally has this kind of uh, liability cover in place. If not, you must just make sure and double check uh, if that is the minimum, the minimum that's on your policy. All right, the liability of key people. And this is normally when the, when the trouble starts and the, the uh, um, Arguments normally starts and uh, who takes responsibility for what? We will definitely have a session just on this matter. This is an article published by a well known website and it can't get any clearer than that. Uh, sexual title scheme trustees can be held liable for losses. But as I said, I just wanted to make a statement and a point uh, there is going to be a session particularly on this, on this aspect. All right, insurance requirements. The insurance requirements did not really change, but the insurers got more stricter on the underwriting requirements. I think that we must also understand that the insurer are also a business, and if they don't make any money, they might as well close their door. Very important to know that the insurer takes on a risk based on the information provided, and that some standard requirements are complied with. This normally goes hand in hand with regulations. The standard requirement on any insurance contract, if you don't comply to standard regulations, then you are in breach of the insurance contract and therefore claims will be repudiated based on that. The most common one that we normally deal with on a regular basis of late is obviously non-compliance according to the building regulations. The last ratio is a point I want to make this morning, and uh, if I may just uh, spend about a minute on this. Uh, the last ratio is something that will be with you as a scheme for the rest of your existence. Um, this, way, this is where policies normally get cancelled. Because of the insurers being under pressure in the last couple of years, they are ruthless when it gets to a high claims ratio. Why will they keep you on insuring? Why will they keep on insuring you if you are a loss to them? Please know that if your claims ratio is above 70%, then you are in the red zone. Please note that the insurer takes in consideration all the CAT claims, as they call it, uh, or better known as uh, uh, catastrophic claims, which is uh, in the case of a tornado coming through or a big storm. I mean, that is also being kept, kept in consideration when they do look at the loss ratio. The next point I want to make is always uh, check if you're getting a cheaper premium. Uh, what influence it has on your claims ratio. Drop the premium means that your claims ratio will go up. Just a footnote on this one is that the insurers are all using the same reassurers. 
So uh, at the end of the day, is when you drop that premium, your loss ratio will definitely go up. And just be careful that you don't get into a position where you become uninsurable. All right, I'm sure just by that couple of points that I've just mentioned, it made you uh, really feel that, uh, or get a feeling on why I made that uh, statement. But there's always good news, and I'm, I'm glad to, to say that uh, Besha has already started thinking of solutions and has started working on solutions to assist you uh, in these uh, circumstances. And uh, I'm sure that I want, just want to make a couple of uh, points uh, with your permission uh, on what, what I feel and what we feel that uh, could be assisting in reaching a, a viable solution. First thing is education. Uh, enable us to make informed decisions. And we believe that it, if we can educate the market, then more informed decisions will be made. We have committed to do more of these sessions and really lined up great specialists in the fields to address you in the weeks to come. Transparency, dealings, are correspond dealings and correspondence need to be transparent. As an example, if I may, the trustees need to notify all owners and tenants of any issues that might arise. There was a, a, a there's, there's definitely a rise in trustees indemnity claims and normally the question that the assessor normally asks is did you notify the parties involved risk management our role as a broker is to do proper risk management with the schemes the insurance policy obviously will be an outflow of the risk management stronger relationships between broker and schemes or managing agents will be able to address this kind of needs by taking a proactive approach we will be able to eliminate some risks. Any ex an example of this will be obviously the fast track claims, which will be the geezers. If there's a number of geezers uh, that's been claimed in a complex, we need to find out what exactly is the reason for that and why, has the same, or why is there so many geezers that uh, has got a problem. All right, uh, we have, uh, we have specialists taken hands with the initiative uh, My Complex. Uh, to assist you uh, to face all these challenges and uh, in the next uh, two or three minutes I would just like to give you a, a little bit of a explanation uh, but beside that just to give you some tools that you can take away and work with uh, in facing these challenges. So let's have a look at some of the benefits of my complex. Let me go back to that slide. The complex health check which is uh, we've implemented and what happens with the, if you fill that in, there's a short questionnaire. Uh, the questionnaire is, will take you uh, roughly about five minutes to complete and then you will automatically get the following. It will give you a report and then also give you a compliance check uh, to say that your complex are a percentage uh, compliant. And uh, on that, they keep, uh, we keep all factors in consideration. Uh, such as legislation, claims, regulations, uh, and what aspects you have complied with. Uh, this can be filed and used for reference at any time. And as I said, transparency is the key here. Then, of course, one of the popular items or, or features on the site will be the need help. A great assistance for people that just want uh, some assistance and uh, not necessarily need to contact or get in contact with a specialist. This site will be able to help you. And uh, by clicking any one of these help features, a panel of specialists will be able to assist you with your query. The first response will be by email and you will only start to pay as soon as it gets to the point where the specialist needs to consult. Let me take an example. You have a legal matter, and uh, if I may use this as an example, dogs barking, what can I do with my, my neighbor's dogs that's barking? You can post uh, the help, and one of our panel of lawyers, specializing, of course, in the sectional title uh, schemes act, will reply with an answer based on facts. Should you wish to go on with the case against your, uh, your uh, neighbor, uh, and uh, then you can obviously have a chat to the lawyer, 
and see what you can uh, do regarding that. Uh, but obviously, you know, from that onwards, uh, then you can then negotiate the rate. And the nice thing about it all is, is that the rates that we have negotiated is preferred rates with the suppliers. Just on the valuation side, uh, we've got a desktop valuation running currently uh, that will assist you at a very uh, well-priced uh, uh, package, um, specifically in, uh, when the people can't get, get out to do the warm body assessments. Uh, so there will be a desktop valuations uh, should you need a valuation to do that. All right, if you want to make use of that, there's the, the website address is www.mycomplex.net. All right, all presentations normally have a, a opera moment, and this is the opera moment. Uh, all the best clients, uh, I am glad to say that you already have this tool available uh, to you. Uh, that you can start using as in with immediate effect. For those guys that is not yet best your clients, uh, what we would like to do is we would like to offer you this uh, facility up until the end of April uh, so that you can use and play around with it and have a look and see you know, how we can assist you in any one of your challenges. So for those that's not best your clients as yet, you can use it up until uh, the end of uh, April. So just to sum up what that offer is, it's the free health check that you can use uh, at your convenience. And I think that is uh, the, one of the first tools I would like to offer you this morning is to go and have a look and see if you can do that free health check and at least get the compliance uh, done and get some sort of indication where you stand as a complex. And then obviously all the other health services will also be included in this package. Obviously, you know, like I say, we can also, we can all, um, just give you the tools uh, to assist you. And I think the next slide will sum it up, you know, uh, depending on what, uh, what you're going to do with the tools uh, that we have provided you. All right, I'm sure that, uh, that uh, sums it up quite well, you know, what you do with the tools that, that gets provided. Um, I also want to just uh, make mention that obviously, you know, you could have done right through this presentation up until now. Please uh, post your questions. If you do have any questions in the chat box, um, Wayne will be handling that for us. And then obviously he will also give it through to us so that we can handle all the, the major questions that's been, been asked on the session in the next session and give you some feedback on that. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for your time this morning. Uh, I hope I didn't take too much of your time. Uh, I want to thank you for your time for attending this, this webinar. Uh, there will be more to come and uh, I'm sure that uh, you, uh, or I hope that you enjoyed it uh, as much as we did and that if you've got any information that you require uh, regarding uh, the, the statements that I made or any points that I made, please feel free to contact me. Uh, there is my contact details. Once again, my name is Saki Stoltz. And uh, thank you for joining us. And we will be in touch with you soon. I also want to thank Besha for proudly bringing this webinar to you today. And I'm sure that it uh, was uh, your worthwhile. Thank you so much. And then we'll chat to you soon.